y'all can see this, but is it half full or half empty? Perspective is, that, is everything, right? It's quarter empty. Some people will say it's empty. Some people will say it's full, right? Perspective. How you view things. The Bible is the same way. How you view things. I've told you before, anything you want to get out of the scriptures, you can make a point for your case. It's in there. Because the scriptures cover everything. It's in there. Perspective. Some read this Bible based on curses. Some read this Bible based on blessings. I'd rather be blessed than cursed. So my perspective of the scriptures come from blessings. I'm sorry, I don't preach hate. I don't have a black Jesus to give you. I don't have a white Jesus to give you. I have a God of everything to give you. Whoever comes to him is welcome. Covenant Family Church is not a racist church. God is not a racist God. No matter how bad they try to make God seem like he hate people, God is love. Many people think the Bible is hard to understand when really it's a simple act to follow. Acts 4.13, Acts 4.13 says, Peter and John were uneducated men, meaning what? They didn't go to Bible school, yet they were chosen by Jesus. Guess who trained them? Jesus, on the job training. They didn't go to college. They didn't have diplomas or degrees. Matter of fact, you could say they went to trade school, family business. They were fishermen. They were regular people like me. I haven't been to Bible school. I let the Holy Spirit use me. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to follow Jesus. You don't have to know Greek or Hebrew to understand the language of God. Matter of fact, God said he'll send a preacher to deliver a message to you. Matthew 28, 18, Matthew 28, 18 instructs us to go into some of the world and preach. No, just some of the world. Just go where the black people are. Just go where the white people are. Just go where the Mexicans are. All. So that means this word is for who? No, it's not. That ain't what the scriptures say. Go into all the world. That means whoever this message can reach, it's available for them. It's available for them to receive. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, let me remind you, we're going to read a lot of scriptures this morning. Because to me, the message was already written. We just got to go through there and find it, dig it out. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4, and we're going to start reading from verse 11. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, for the equipment equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Meaning, 
you need to study this word so you won't be deceived by what a man up here teaching you. Amen. If you know for yourself, you will know when somebody is up here lying to you. But speaking the truth in love, underline love, speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body and for the edifying of itself in what? In love. There's a popular saying that it's not what you know, but who you know. And I'm here to tell you this morning who you should know. A lot of people are religious but don't have relationship. In order to have relationship with anything, you have to spend time with it. Many people know scripture and still don't know God. A lot of people research what they want to be true but lack understanding. Like I tell you, perception. So if I feel I'm cursed, when I read these scriptures, I read it from the point of being cursed. Even though it says blessings, I can't understand that part because my perception is wrong. Amen? I didn't go to Bible school. I, don't, I didn't study theology. I don't care what theologians say. I only care what is written. Every man will give you his point of view. But God's word is true how it is written. I'm only interested in what the scriptures say. The scriptures tell us do not lean on what? That means you have to have someone to teach you, right? Who do we want to teach us? Do we want man or do we want the spirit of the living God who wrote these scriptures to be in us to guide us to truth? We want truth. That's it. We want truth. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say if you graduate from Bible school, you go to heaven. You're required to study these scriptures before you go out and talk to people. And that's what I've been doing to make your job easier. I study the scriptures. I'm not here to give you opinion. I'm here to tell you what these words say. With help from the Holy Spirit today, I'm going to sum up this whole Bible in one word. I'm going to sum up this whole Bible in one person. Romans 3.23. We all should know this scripture. Romans 3.23 states what? We all have sinned. Now, some of us have sinned. Only a few. Only white people have sinned. Only black people have sinned. All have sinned. That means all need to come to repentance. There is only one fleshly body born that did not sin. And that fleshly body had the spirit of God in it. And his name was what? Today I'm going to show you why following Jesus and the scriptures is the best thing you can do no matter what religion you believe. So if you believe another religion other than this one, today I'm going to show you why Jesus is the truth. Let's turn to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And we'll start reading from verse 17. This is Peter talking after the crowd saw him heal a man. 
He told them it was the power of Jesus that did it, not him. Many of the preachers today take credit for God's work. They say, I did. I healed. I gave. Nothing can be done without God or can be done without God's will. Peter is telling them about what they did to Jesus. Let's read. Verse 17, it says, Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as also did your rulers. They killed Jesus out of ignorance, their ignorance. They didn't know their ignorance is God's truth. What was meant for evil is used for good. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore. Peter was telling them to come believe in Jesus and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatsoever he says to you. In other words, he was telling you to listen to Jesus. One is coming and you should listen to him. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our families, saying to Abraham, in your seed, some of the families are blessed. No, some of the families are blessed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant, Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Jesus came to bless the whole world Amen. by being the sacrifice for not just black people, for not just white people, but for every human that will receive the gift. Verse 22, it, Moses said, listen to Jesus. In verse 24, it states, all the prophets foretold these days. In other words, all of them also said, one is coming, listen to him. First Moses, then the prophets, all said, listen to Jesus. Now let's turn to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, and we'll start reading from verse 1. Say amen when you get there. Amen. I told you, we're, we're going to read a few scriptures today. John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Now, let's listen to Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. That's how you know Jesus is God because no regular human is going to talk to their mama like that. <laughs> if I'd have told my mama, Woman, I would have met God that day. That's how you know Jesus is God. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, 
do it. Not to get you off track, but let's put something together really quick. I find it interesting that Jesus' first recorded miracle was on the third day of a wedding. That's what it said, right? And they ran out of wine. What day did Jesus rise on? Third day. What does wine represent in the scriptures? Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Take and drink, all of you. Jesus' first recorded miracle was on the third day of a wedding, and he produced the best wine. He rose on the third day and sacrificed the best blood. You've tried the rest, now try the best. Jesus, the blood that will wash away all the sins of the world. I love how the Bible goes hand in hand if you study it. Many of us have just read that many times, and we have never put two and two together. Now let's get back to the story. We can conclude from the conversation between Jesus and his mother, Jesus knew who he was. The mother knew who he was, right? But Jesus said his time hadn't come yet, but the mama said, I know what's best. The time is now, right? Mama knows best. If you're a servant, she told the the servants, do what he says. What does that mean? If you're a servant of Jesus, you're supposed to be doing what he says, not what you think he said, not what your bishop think he said, not what your leader think he said, but what he actually said. In other words, follow the instructions of Jesus. First Moses said, listen to Jesus. The prophet said, listen to Jesus. His mother said, listen to Jesus. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And we'll start reading from verse 1. I still hear some pages turning. I like that y'all using them pages instead of scrolling. <laughs> Matthew 17, verse number one, it says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. When you follow Jesus, he'll take you higher. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Notice it said Moses and Elijah appeared to them, but it says talking with him, not them. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter telling Jesus basically, I'm glad you let us come see this. I'm glad we are here in the presence to witness what is actually going on. But while he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. So notice, Peter was talking about building three tabernacles, right? But the Father, God the Father, interrupted that talk and told them, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. A lot of men have done great things in this world. I won't take away none of the things they have done. A lot of men have done many great things. But there is only one you should be paying attention to, and that's Jesus. 
Many of us put our leader in front of Jesus. And God said, no, no, no. Listen to Jesus. Notice, Moses and Elijah had appeared talking to Jesus. They wanted to build three tabernacles. They was trying to recognize everybody there. God said, this is my son. Who should we be following? Moses did great things. Elijah did great things. Still, God said, listen to Jesus. Many of us think our pastor, our leader, our bishop, or whoever we follow is greater than Jesus. Many people put their church, their organization, or whatever they believe in, in front of Jesus. They do more for that organization than they do for Jesus. God said, listen to Jesus. That's what we're supposed to do. Listen to Jesus. When you are with Jesus, there's nothing to be afraid of. Notice when they heard that voice come out that cloud, they got scared and fell on their face. Jesus touched them and said, arise. May Jesus touch us so we can arise. First the prophet said, listen to Jesus. Then his mama said, listen to Jesus. Now God the Father said, listen to Jesus. Have we picked up on the pattern of the scriptures? Jesus said he come in the volume of the book, which means it's a lot of history, it's a lot of stories and other stuff in it, but this book is about salvation, is about Jesus. Amen? Let's turn to John. John chapter 6. And we'll start reading at verse 28. John chapter 6, verse 28. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we, that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's think about this. They ask, what is the work of God? Many people think your personal works can get you to heaven. Oh, that's what these people out here telling you. You got to do this. You got to do that. What does this right here say? Huh? Believe on him who he sent. No physical work can get you to heaven. Only belief in Jesus. Why? Jesus did the work. Jesus did the work. God said he searched the earth from top to bottom. Nobody was worthy. That means nothing we can do. No matter how hard we try, in our own strength, nothing we can do can match the work Jesus did. Amen. The prophet said, listen to Jesus. The mama said, listen to Jesus. God the Father said, listen to Jesus. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, believe in him. Why should you believe in Jesus? We all know the scripture. I ain't going to tell you to turn there. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, who, whosoever do all the work? Believe. That's your work. That's your job to do. You have to believe in Jesus. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So let me back up a little bit. These people say they works can get them to heaven. That was one of the questions I asked the brother out there. I said, so works get you into heaven? And he said, yes. 
That let me know. That's when I cut the conversation. I said, oh, there's not even no reason for me to even continue talking. Then I asked him, I said, does being an Israelite get you into heaven? And he said, yes. He said, the Bible gave descriptions of the names on the gates, and you just need to know what gate you're walking through. <laughs> I said, Lord Jesus, help us. Y'all out here deceiving the people. So I walked off and told them, I said, you know, the blood of all the people you tell this to is on your hands. You just need to preach what Jesus said. Many of us are looking at our past and thinking we can't be forgiven for those things. But I'm here to tell somebody, Jesus is looking at your future, not your past. Y'all remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt because she turned around and looked back at the sin they came from instead of looking forward to the Savior. Many of us are stuck looking at where we came from instead of where we're going. What you experienced in the past is nothing compared to what you'll experience in the future if you follow Jesus. Now, what did Jesus tell us to do? What did Jesus tell us to do? There are many commandments that you should follow. But if you're a follower of Christ, he gave you the cheat code. He told you how to successfully get to heaven through him. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. Now, I told y'all we was going to read some scriptures. I know a, lo a lot of people used to the preacher getting up here reading two scriptures and give you his opinion for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the words say. We're going to read the word. Matthew 22, verse 35, starting reading. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? See, God used an educated man, someone that people think highly of, a lawyer, to ask the, to ask the question. Jesus gave him a simple answer. Jesus said to him, You shall Love the Lord your God, underline love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love, underline love, your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang some of the law, a piece of the law. All the law and the prophets. Jesus said, love God. Jesus said, love your neighbor. But what else? Some of us think only red letter in the Bible are words of Jesus. That's what some of us think. Oh, it's red letter. That's Jesus talking. But the scriptures say all of them are inspired by God. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. And we'll start reading at verse 43. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. And it says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes, us, he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the IRS do the same? And if you greet your brethren, what do you do more than others? Do not even the IRS do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven. 
Who want to be perfect? We want to be perfect in the eyes of the Lord, right? This right here tells us how to be perfect. How are you to be perfect? It's one word. Love. You ought to love God and love everybody else the same way you love God. I told y'all this message was for me because last Sunday I wasn't coming in love. I'm just being honest. So that's why this word came to me and said, I need to love them brothers even though they don't love me. They say they love me, but they don't if you're being disrespectful to me. How can I listen to what you have to say if you're not coming in love, if you disrespecting my church? Not only more than that, you disrespecting the God I believe, I believe in by teaching falsehood. Proverbs 25, 21 and Romans 12, 20. Proverbs 25, 21 and Romans 12, 20 both say, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head and the Lord will reward you. I was thinking, what is coals of fire on his head? To me, if you get coals of fire, whip your head. But it means to cause him to have remorse for him treating you wrong while you treat him good. So we need to heap the coals of fire on these people's head. Amen? Romans 12, 17. Romans 12, 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. So what it all boils down to is we're supposed to love and forgive the same way Jesus loved and forgave us. We want all the mercy, but don't want to give none out. I'm summing up the Bible in one word, which is love. This message was for me. I got to come in love better. So I'm going to end y'all with the, this scripture. We know God is a spirit, right? The scriptures tell us God is a spirit. What are the fruits of the spirit? Galatians 5.22 the fruit of the Spirit is what? In other words, the fruit of God is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no love, no law. This message was for me because when I was reading, the, the Lord said to me, when you love, you have joy. When you love, you have peace. When you love, you're long-suffering. When, when you love, you're kind, you're good, you're faithful, you're gentle. But most importantly, when you love, you have self-control. Now, at our school, I teach self-control to the kids. But sometimes, no, <laughs> it's hard. People will test us. People will take us there and then be mad at you for bringing it back. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to love. When you love, by default, you follow the commandments. Jesus gave us the cheat code to being perfect. All the other religions that believe your good works will get you to heaven, you should believe in Jesus. Let him guide you there. If you want your heart to be as light as a feather, listen to the instructions of Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Understand and trust him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. If you are in the truth, you are in love. 
God is love. Jesus is love. When you love Jesus, you show others the true way of living is love. Listen to Jesus and love all. Be an example of Christ. Certain groups want us to go back to living in segregation. They want us to go back to living in segregation. My response to them is, don't just treat somebody that look like you good. Treat everybody good. We could all live together if we treat the next person how we want to be treated. We wouldn't have to segregate. Other people wouldn't be put above the next person. Because guess what? No matter what they think, you either go into hell or you go into heaven. When you go to heaven, it ain't going to be all people that look like you there. When you go to hell, it ain't going to be all people that look. It's going to be a mixture of everybody who do not believe and turn away from the teachings of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you are here and you don't know Jesus, or maybe you have backslidden and gone away from love, You can't just love your family. You can't just love your friends. You can't just love black people. You can't just love white people. You can't just love any nationality. If you're reading this Bible, your job is to love the same way Christ loved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that you brought today. We know that in you, we're supposed to show the love you showed us. Without love, we're not following the footsteps of you. You didn't just do good for your people. You did good for all. Your salvation is for all who believe you, all who receive. Father God, let us all receive and believe in you. Receive the love you have and be examples of the love you give. In Jesus' name, amen.